Pennsylvania Congressman Mike Kelly is front and center in the battle over the Commonwealth's electoral votes. One America's Christina Bob spoke with him to learn more. Joining me now from Pennsylvania, U.S. Congressman Mike Kelly, Pennsylvania Congressman. Sir, thank you so much for joining and coming to give us an update on the case. Please tell us what's happening in your, in your case in Pennsylvania. Well, do you know where we are right now? And, and sometimes there's confusion as to what the process is. What we had initially asked for a temporary injunctive relief, which would uh, have, have asked Pennsylvania, please, until we hear this case, don't send your electors. Uh, uh, hold up on that part of it. Uh, Supreme Court did not agree with that, and they let that go forward. But the other part of our case is on the unconstitutionality of what took place in Pennsylvania with something called Act 77. Uh, and in that, uh, and I, we could go through it very, and I'll do it very quickly. In order for the voting laws to be changed, there would have to be an amendment to our Constitution, Pennsylvania Constitution. Uh, and it, it really works this way. And there had to be a majority vote in both both uh, houses of our state government on successive sessions to vote for a change, an amendment to the Constitution on the way we vote in Pennsylvania. Uh, it started off. Uh, where the legislative uh, legislature in, in Pennsylvania did go through the first step. They had the first vote. After that, though, they decided, well, you know what? Let's just skip on to what the next issue is, and that is changing with a, a no-excuse mail-in ballot, which is, is, is not the way you go about it. See, the second step should have been it would have to pass both houses in two success, in a, a successive sessions uh, where the legislature would agree on this change. It would then go to the state and each, each, in each county, at the two newspapers, there had to be coverage of what was being contemplated and taking place. And once that was done, then there had to finally be an, a vote, a referendum, where the citizens of Pennsylvania would go and vote whether or not they agreed with this piece of legislation that was being proposed. Now, so going forward. None of that was done. And that's a really important point. And actually, that was a kind of a large piece of the Texas case and the 17 other states that joined. Can you tell us a little bit about how your case is different than the Texas case? Because I know a lot of people are concerned or wonder, you know, if they threw out Texas for not having standing, how realistic is your, your chances of success? You know what? That, that's, a good, that's a good question. And, and I think it's hard for anybody to understand what exactly happened in the Texas case, because there's not a great deal of, of uh, publishing what the justices decided or why they decided. It's just that we don't find uh, that, that, there's a, uh, that Texas has standing. Now, I do believe Texas had standing. I do believe that the other states that signed on also had standing. And I believe in Pennsylvania, we have standing. I think a lot of people get confused between um, you, the responsibility from uh, like a U.S. Congress member like yourself versus the state legislature versus the governor versus the secretary of state. There's a lot of leaders involved in what's happening right now. And one leader's claiming authority and others are saying, well, I don't have authority. And people are saying, but you actually do. There's a lot of finger pointing, blame shifting. And can you tell me who has the authority to make decisions on elections in the states and whose responsibility is it to ensure the election election was done with integrity. Listen, all the parties that we talked about are responsible. All of them take an oath of office. What I've come to realize right now, that we place our politics above our policy, that we place our politics our, above our patriotism, and that for some unknown reason, doing the right thing for the right reasons has always become something that we try to marginalize right now. It makes absolutely no sense. I think you're exactly right. And I think the American people are looking for transparency. And I think from what it appears, the American people are willing to accept whoever was elected. They just want to know that whoever was elected was truly the one who was elected. So, sir, thank you so much for your time. I'm really grateful. And it's always an honor and a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you, Christina. I'm Christina Bob, One America News, Washington. Want to see more videos like this? Visit OANN.com for immediate access to all the clips you've been waiting to see.